anything? Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, I think I'm live. <laughs> I'm not the like most technical here. So if you're jumping on here, um, I'm excited you're here uh, joining in tonight. Um, I have a special guest, my friend Larry Sparks. I almost wanted to call Larry Dr. Larry, but oh. we've established that he's not a doctor. So um, <laughs> it's funny how people use titles these days, um, like to intro things. And it's like, I'm just Anna. So welcome to this Facebook Live. And um, I think people are coming on here. So tell me if you can hear me. And yes, you say, Mary, thank you. All right, well, I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Um, we have an exciting evening for you. We, Larry and I were just at Sid Roth's It's Supernatural this past week. It feels like not even a week. It's been like a few days. Um, I feel a little jet lagged, to be honest. <laughs> so I've been traveling for five days, like DC, back to back. Um, but we had, we just want to share what happened there and a little bit on what's on our heart tonight and I know that God wants just to release see I believe that you can pull on somebody's testimony hmm. and claim it as your own and so I think that as we share about the glory and some of the stuff that happened at Sid Ross I know that if you're needing uh, something God's gonna just do it for you tonight I believe you can grab on to our story and claim it as your own so I don't want to ramble anymore. I just want to bring Larry on with me. So without further ado, I'm going to try and bring him on. Let's see if it comes. Yes, there he is. Oh, it's right here. Hey. <laughs> Good to have you join me. It's kind of funny. I'm hosting this because um, he's more technical. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm like, hey, you do all the sharing. You. <laughs> I just do everything my wife tells me, and it, and it works. Yes. Yeah. We're blessed. We both have spouses that are super <laughs> technical. My husband's yeah. computer. Um, website designer and programmer and he's so super technical so unfortunately it makes me lazy sometimes i think <laughs> like you fix it i'll like take something and i'm like fix it please <laughs> you know <laughs> um but thanks for joining me larry tonight oh, yeah. and i know we're both been traveling pretty crazily so here we are yes yeah you know it's interesting i'll be completely honest i had no idea what i was going to really talk about except maybe share a little bit of our story of, uh, we were just at Sid Roth's this week, but I felt like the Lord said, listen, to be honest, guys, you don't need to hear about how we went to a show and did that and did record. That's cool. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I really feel on a, and I'm not quite sure where this is going to go. I just, I, all I can hear, this is so funny. All I can see and hear is Sid who was sitting on the stage and he kept every time he would say, well, I feel it now. <laughs> the glory is falling. Wow. I mean, do you, do you, don't you feel there's a residue on it? He was making a prophetic announcement of what's available now. Like it's, not, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I remember hearing Joyce Meyer one time, she said this and I liked it because I feel like it. She's like, I wish I could open up every believer's head and just put some information in there. And the only, that, that information for me would be God is available now. Like yeah. every, so I don't know. Like I, I would love to hear you maybe share a little bit about, you know, I mean, we could go back and forth sharing about our journey because the last couple of days, I think God, more than being on a show, God showed us and taught us a lot. Yeah. I think going on to Sid Roth's show, um, you know, the Lord had really shown me, I had, I saw this vision, Larry, when we were, cause Sid did something really different this time around, which you guys are going to get to see the show. This is kind of a tease. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you can only see bits and clips. We have like a little mini clip from it, but this show will come be released, I think, end of August or beginning of September. We, I don't have a date yet, but we'll let you know. But um, going into this, I, I just really felt like what I saw was that we were going to minister and I saw Larry, myself and Sid, and I just saw the fire of God just falling. And I saw like ahead of time, I had seen like this weighty, thick presence of the Lord. Um, now I seem to be glitching, maybe not on your end, but on my end, it looks glitchy. So we'll see if this works, but right. um, I had seen this weighty presence of the Lord just fall. And so that's what I saw ahead of time. So that's what I was expecting. And can you guys all hear me okay? 
So let yep. me know because on my end, it's super glitchy. Larry, can you hear me okay? I can I can hear you. I can see you. Again, all okay. of it is just some slight uh, lag, but usually it clears up. Yes, just warning, we're, we're going to be experiencing some heavy thunderstorms. So it's like, I just think I heard thunder. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, so anyways, that was my expectation. For this show, I went into the expectation. I actually, like, instead of saying, pray, people, pray for us that the glory of God would fall, I was like, pray that we're so yielded in however God wants to move. Because I didn't have any doubt in my mind that the glory wouldn't fall. You know, I was just 100% expectant. And I thought, I just, I just had faith, Larry. I had faith yeah. God would ever, like, I felt like with anything God's possible. Yeah. You no, know, I just I had that level of faith was there. And I don't know if it's that's just me in general. I have childlike faith, but also Sid Roth kind of sets that bar. I feel like yeah. he's a person that is so hungry. I am so blessed to be just ministering beside him. I'm like, yeah. wow, God, like he is a man in his 70s that is still so hungry for God. And he's yeah. still like, I'm not satisfied. I know there's more. God, there has to be something more. And he is so pressing in for yeah. a move of God. And just to see that and go, wow, like, I hope when I'm 70, I'm the same way, that I'm still, you know, hungry and going yeah. up. And you, you that are on here that 70, just you can keep going after God and be hungry for the more of God. To be with Sid is pretty, pretty phenomenal experience, really. Well, you know, and the thing, I, I love that because the thing I admire about him and it's, the, it's these people, you know, it's like him, Bill Johnson, Heidi, people that you and I both, you know, Patricia. I love the fact, you know, some, and I know for those of you who are watching, like, oh, man, those are big names. Those are, you know what I, I love about them is they never graduate from being hungry for God. Yeah. Um, I've been around leaders who, who who feel like sometimes I don't need to worship. I don't need to press. I don't need to pursue. I don't need to go after. I don't need to humble myself. Um, because it's almost like well, I've reached a certain place of attainment, so I don't need to do that. Um, we don't ever graduate from that because there's always more of God. There's always because God's that big. I figure if the angels never get tired of singing the same thing around Him, uh, then my goodness, we 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 never stop. We can't. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, for what what happened as just a short clip, like what would you describe? Larry, like if, sorry, you're drinking water as I ask you questions. That's all right. <laughs> I'm not a good host. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's fine. But if, like, would, what would you describe was your, your experience being there? Yeah. I really believe, uh, and I, I'm, I'm still processing some of this because I want whatever I shared to be relevant to the folks who are watching. Because, like I was telling Anna, you know, it's, this stuff is cool. I love doing it. I know Anna does, but we, we don't do stuff like this because, oh, I'm going to announce I'm on this next show and do this and all that. Um, I, I really feel like what God is doing, he's doing something global. I feel like even right now the Lord is, he has the word awareness. Like, oh, I, I feel the presence of the Lord right now. One of the things, because Sid tweaks me a lot, and I say that in a good way, because I'll use some language sometimes, and he'll, Sid will not agree with you when he doesn't agree with you, if that makes sense. Like if you're saying something that could be tweaked, Sid will be like, actually, here's what I think about that. And you know what? Every time Sid does that with me, it calls me to another level. I say all that to say that when I was there, I kept getting this thing from Sid that it's here. God's glory is here. It's not, I, I've got to just tell the people, I mean, for those of you who are watching, you're familiar with Anna, you're for, probably maybe a little bit familiar with me. We just want to encourage you. It's time to touch God. It is time for you. You have the ability to touch God now. Many people are waiting for a touch from God. I felt like, and Anna, we, I think we can say this and na navigate it sensitively. While we were ministering, we, we, we did the show, and then we had about 20 minutes worth. And it was just, I told Anna, oh, I loved every moment of it, particularly when Sid, Anna, and myself ministered together. Because that is the new wineskin the Lord is releasing. Team ministry. We saw that in Israel. Um, you're here. It's a lot, I heard you say. Oh. <laughs> you're here. Go and for I'm it. here. No, I'm just saying. There's this new thing of team ministry in the sense where 
everybody is hearing the Holy Spirit. And this is wonderful flow where it's not, it's not about one person having the stage and the platform and who's got the word that everybody needs to listen to. I, I mean, we all dove in and it was seamless because everybody was plugging into what the Holy Spirit was saying. And that's what we got to do. And my thing is, my goodness, that could have gone all, you know, it could have gone all night. We could have kept going. I think things were just getting warmed up. So I want to encourage people in your own life or if you have a church, yeah. we've got to make, I, I'm sensing this right now, Anna, because I'm still processing what we learned as we were there. I feel like there's this real call to make space for God, like yeah. make space for God and you can do it. Don't wait for God to make space. In fact, don't, don't say, God, you can do it this way. You could do it that way. I mean, we don't instruct God. We just need to make space. That was I learned that from Sid, but and, and I'm sure you could comment on this as well. Mm -hmm. I was so blessed hanging around those two revivalists from Australia, Jody mm -hmm. and Ben Hughes. Mm -hmm. And Ben, and then Joel Norai said this as well, but Ben was talking about how they had a 50-day revival going on. You know, the guy planned 50 days of revival in Fiji. And then I was like, okay, that's a little perplexing. And Ben was like around day 17. Right. For whatever reason. God, things just broke open, but it was like that shows the sovereignty of God breaking in with a suddenly, but it also goes to show that we actually need to reach out, make space for God, and uh, I think that's one of the greatest takeaways that I, I kind of pulled away from that whole time. Yeah, I think that, yeah, for me, yeah, when he said that, Ben, our friend Ben Hughes, he said that about on day 17, there was breakthrough, and, you know, they really broke in, God really broke in, I thought, wow, you know, it's so true. I felt like we were at Sid. I felt like there's a measure where we, it was, it felt like in Ezekiel 47 and I can feel the fire of God right now as we're thinking, but it was like the levels, you could feel it rise thicker and thicker and thicker from when we were first there and it just continued to grow and grow and grow. And I thought, my goodness, God, what are you going to do if this keeps going on? You know, I thought we, me and you even Larry talked about, are we going to cancel our flights? Yes. You know, how, how are we going to make room for our schedule if this just, the you know, breaks out? And But for me, I think what was very impactful about that show and what we want to talk to you tonight is just that you can have access to the glory of God. And often I think we're waiting for like a touch yeah. um, from God. And Larry, I remember that you spoke something that impacted me when you said that we need to reach out and touch God, like mm -hmm. the woman with the issue of blood. And that so resonated um, with me because I know like what I spoke on Sid's show, I hope it came across there actually. <laughs> you have a very short time to get everything out. So, but what God had once spoken to me was he had just said this, guys. He had said, um, I was asking, I was praying for God for an encounter and I, I believe it was, it was something was going on. I was really tired. I was like, God, I just really need an encounter with you. I'm feeling super dry right now in my walk with you. And I just really need to encounter you. And I'm praying for God for this encounter. And I know that many of you probably watching this can relate. Like you've been in a season where you're like, God, <laughs> I need to see you. I need to touch from yeah. you. Like if, if you can break in right now, it would be a good moment for me. Um, and I was in that place and I heard Holy Spirit whisper, you're already in. And I was like, wow, it just turned like a light switch on for me as yeah. far as kind of getting the grip of it. of Like going, okay, the mindset of, wow, like I'm already, I have access to him and he's already in me and I'm with him right now. And it kind of changed my mindset from, okay, I get a touch of God. This is my Jesus time or my God time or my glory dose to why don't I get, I have this all the time. And now granted, of course, there's things that we do so that we can, you know, keys that to access his glory, right? We, right. you know, things such as keeping our flesh pure, staying in the word, all these kinds of things. I'm not saying that you separate yourself from those things, but the mindset that right now, and this is what I said on Sid's show, right now you're speeded on, on high yeah. with him. And I always tell people, as I say, one foot here on earth and one foot in heaven. Yeah. Imagine okay. that. 
Now, I know that wrecks some theologies, and I know it's kind of like, what is she talking about? But take a moment and, and just chew on that. Like you're seated on high with him right now. Yeah. You have access to the glory of God right now. I actually feel Yeah. I, I feel the same I don't know, Larry, it's just the same similar feeling of what we felt at Sid Roth, maybe just that yeah. thick, weighty presence, kind of like you're swimming underwater in the fiery presence of God. Mm. Just coming through this stream right now. And um yeah. So I just want to tell you, you have access right now. I was reading this scripture. Let me find it for a second. Hold on. Yeah, in, in Song of Songs, I was reading it today and meditating on it. And I believe it's in chapter 2. Let me find it. Yeah. It was in the Passion Translation, verse 13, where it says, Arrive, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. For now is the time to rise and come away with me. Yes. And so many times I think our perspective is um, from the lower place, yeah. from our current circumstance. And I didn't know I was going to talk about this, but I just feel Holy Spirit on it. Yeah. But this ability to just arise and come up to the higher place to press into him, to lean into him, and wow, just get God's perspective for a second. Yeah. How many of us need God's perspective right now? Come on, I know I'm speaking yeah. this on here. There's there's an there's somebody on here. Sorry, I just moving into prophecy, Larry. Yep. You uh, there's somebody on here named Mary. I just got your name. I just heard Mary. Very clear, Isabel. And um if you're a Mary, give me a thumbs up or a whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Smiley, tickle, poke. I don't know. <laughs> whatever these kids are doing. Um, but he, listen, I have a word for you, Mary. It just really, really quick. I'm just, and then we'll jump back in, Larry. I'm sorry, I just no, going no. on a, a prophetic thing. But Mary, I just hear um, to speak he, healing over your body right now. And I hear the Lord saying, you, Mary, speak to your own body. You have the power and authority of Christ within you, and you speak to your own body yourself, and you say, body be healed by his stripes, I've been healed. And there's more power, Mary, in your voice than you think. Your ability to just declare over your own body. Oh, look, there's a Mary. Declare into your own situation, Mary, what you want to see God do. Because I I just heard God say there's so much power in your declarations, prophetic declarations. Yeah. Um, but right now you've walked through a season where the enemy wants to steal your voice and make you feel oppressed. Like you don't have a voice anymore or almost just like, am I even being effective in my prayers? And, and that's actually a lie of the enemy. And you like God is hearing your prayers and he's answering them. That's on a side note. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you know what? The reality is like this, that should be normal. L listen, you know, I, I can come on. I'm a teacher. I operate the teaching thing. Um, one of the things we need to learn how to do, though, is like I need to sit down and shut up. I mean, truth be told, when God is moving, when God is moving and God is speaking and prophesying, that is not an interruption. One of the things the Lord told me is what Anna just did, and Anna, if, if the Lord should do that continually, just do it. I mean, that's what Sid always says, but it's really true. Like at the end of the day, my my agenda, a sermon, a message, or whatever, like, that is not superior to God speaking. Can't be. Can't be. We must always, in the same way, it's like we always must lay things down to accommodate God. To accommodate God. Um, and, and and that I, happened to me when we were at dinner with our friends. Uh, yes. <laughs> we're, yeah. so good. we're having dinner with our friends and we're having this amazing conversation about revival and Holy Spirit outbreaking and the glory of God and all this stuff. And like, literally I'm like, I felt so rude. I was like, guys, I love you all, but I need to go now. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I have an assignment of the Lord that I need to go do. <laughs> and I know it was, it was awkward and funny, but at the same time, sometimes we've got to be able to just move, you know, when Holy Spirit moves where he says move and be okay to say, this is what I got to do right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're free to be in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, I had, um, 
I had another prophetic word, but I'm going to chew on it for a while. Did you have something you wanted to add, Larry? The only thing I was going to say is regarding what you said about being seated with Jesus in heavenly places, I that the reality is that shouldn't tweak our theology. I mean, that shouldn't bother our theology. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, like, that is the place we need to live and operate from because that is what we brought into in Ephesians chapter 2. It says we've been seated with heavenly realms in Jesus. Like, that is our identity. And in Hebrews chapter 12, 22, I've not been able to graduate out of that passage. It says you've come to Mount Zion. In other words, you've already come to this place. Robert Henderson says it this way, and I love it. He said the church is so often trying to get to places we're already at. And that so ministers to me because it's so true. It's so freeing. I actually feel like the Lord's saying right now, this is going to sound funny because of sometimes how we use our language. I feel like God is saying this on it. He's saying, stop trying to open the heavens. Whoa. <laughs> I feel like he's saying, it's, he, and then this is funny, but I feel like God is saying it's hard to open heaven. Just mm -hmm. try it with me. He's saying, it's very hard. I'm talking to somebody right now where you're really trying to press into God. He's like, you know, it's always going to be very hard for you to open heaven. Now, just, just track with me for a minute. Here's the reality. I feel like he's saying, because I've already opened it. The only hand that could open heaven was the hand of God. And we read about in Mark chapter 1, the ESV, English Standard Version of the Bible, is the best. Because it talks about when Jesus was at his baptism, the best word, the best language. Wow, I feel the fire of God on this. The best language that could ever be used when Jesus got baptized and talks about the heavens parted. Um, it actually says the ESV versions, most faithful to the Greek, says the heavens were torn open. The heavens were literally torn, violently open. The veil was torn, I have to imagine, violently from top to bottom. Why? God was making a statement. He's saying, no longer is heaven closed. No longer are the heavens closed. So I want to encourage you. I know we have our open heavens books and our open heavens, and that's fine. That's what I love about Bill Johnson and Bethel. They really teach from a perspective that heaven's already open. The reality is this. And then you go into whatever the Lord's telling you because I feel like you're processing stuff. I just want to encourage people. It's that easy. Heaven's open. And when you actually read the, the prayers of Paul, you know, you're talking about being seen with Jesus in heavenly places. Paul never prayed for an open heaven. But you know what he prayed for? He prayed for open eyes. <laughs> pray for open. I feel like the Lord's, I just want to release that. I pray for open eyes, and you, you really could probably pray into that better than I can. But I feel like he's saying open eyes to see the open heaven. Whoa, oh my. I'm, I'm, come on, ooh. come on. Shut up, oh, Yeah, I just feel the fire of God on this. Come on, guys. We've got to get, um, wow. we've got to get a perspective from God. Like yeah. open our eyes, Jesus, to see you. Listen, yeah. when Jesus walks into a meeting, Oh my, how it changes. Yeah, yeah. It can be the most beautiful <laughs> teaching and well put together message, drama, skit, whatever. But Jesus walks into a meeting and it's like the atmosphere in instantly shifts. Yeah. The fire of God instantly falls. I've been in so many meetings like that where Jesus walks in and I'm like, I'll literally be standing there and I'm like, hey, I'm going to shut up now <laughs> and and stop what I'm saying and wait on whatever he's got on his agenda yeah. and just lay down my notes and go, okay, you know, what are you doing, God? What are you doing, God? And, yeah. and for meetings where um, angels walk into the room and you're like, wow, what is going on? I had that recently. I'm just going to share this because I yep. think it's about this seeing thing. Um, recently, I was in a meeting in Maryland, and we had a woman that I was praying for, and it was very powerful. She got a lot of deliverance in her healing. It was beautiful what God was doing. And then suddenly, I saw this angel. Now, I'm a seer, so I see, you know, I see with my eyes open visions. But I'm, I'm just going to freely share this story with you. And you can come up with your issues about Sears later. But anyways, <laughs> look, at I was praying for her. And I saw this angel walk from behind her and walk straight through the crowd and go to the very back of the room to another lady. So I, I was done praying for her. I stopped what I was doing. And I moved and I went to follow the angel. And I prayed with the lady that the angel stopped behind. 
okay? Because I, like, when I minister, I just want to follow whatever Jesus is doing, what he's doing. And, and I, so I follow, track the with the angels or whatever, track with his presence. So if you don't see angels, just track what you're feeling in the spirit. So I'm tracking with the angel, and I go back, and I ended up praying over this lady, and I had no idea that out of a crowd of, like, 70 people, that that was that lady's mom, like, mm. in the very back of the room. I had no idea. I was just like, oh, oh, okay, go here, go here, go here. But um, it was um, it was so crazy that that happened. But about this, this whole thing of God, we need eyes to be able to see from your yes. perspective what you're doing, because then he unlocks things. And then we step into a greater level, a greater level, a greater level. I remember when we were there at SIDS, Larry, it just felt like now all three of us are very different styles of how we minister, yeah. Yeah. right? Like Sid's over there, ho, ha, ha, ho, you know, and he's, he's getting touched. Oh, yeah. I love that about it. Yeah. I really hope they keep that on camera. I hope yeah. they pull yeah. that off because he's beautiful. I love when he's hit by Holy oh. Spirit. He, the man releases fire on his word. Yeah. Every time he would say fire, greater measure of fire, it was like, you felt wow, it no like you yeah. feel the intensity lift. And then you would, you Larry, you would come and you would teach something and you would just pour out and it was like, wow. And then I would move. But even though it seemed like not organized, if you really think about it, it was like, hmm, what's, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. There was this atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. There was this intense atmosphere of the glory of God. Yes. We are all pressing in and we're willing, all three of us and everyone there willing to lay down our own agenda. Yeah. And just say, God, we want to have your way and move with wherever you're going to move. And because we're willing to be like yielded and just lay it down, the fire, I just felt like just, you know, I just felt like it kept increasing, increasing, increasing. I just find it funny. Somebody just commented, I'm surprised Sid didn't end up on the floor. And, uh, and I, I, I agree. I, I, I love agree. that about him. I, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I believe that. I mean, he's, He's really, I would say, for, for you and I, particularly going back to Israel, I'd say Sid's provocation, like Sid really going after this greater glory, um, I think that really is one of the key things that opened it up in the spirit to even do this book, to even have language for that. I acknowledge him you know, in the book because he's the one who really, he's going after it. I believe his eyes will see it, um, and his eyes will see it because he's, 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 I mean, even Sid's, telling us he's pushing against the wineskin of television because there that's one thing we learned that there is a wineskin or an operating system uh, of television and that's yeah. just the way it is i can tell though that his heart is to push against it and you know it's one of those things when we talk about a new wineskin it just means a way of doing things a way of operating and in the bible in order for new wine to flow and in order for new wine to be contained that wineskin needs to be expandable and I feel like in our lives, we just need to be expandable, interruptible. And like you said, our agenda must be to accommodate the agenda of God. Like that's the whole essence of this message. Like, yeah, I'm just going to be yeah. bold and kitty off that word, Larry. Um, I just felt like, like something I shared. Um, I'm just going to be bold and say it. The church in the wineskin that we're currently in right now is needing to be very stretched. Yeah. I feel like something God had showed me, and you're you're gonna see it on Sid when they show the show. But the Lord had shown me this historical kind of timeline in Israel, and I didn't even know. I literally had no idea that I was gonna be talking about this on the show. I love how things just yeah. <laughs> it's like Anna right in front of all these people on camera yeah. share with us about what God showed you, which is fine. I openly I don't hold back, but. The yeah. truth is, I saw this this glory coming, and I, I do believe we we have access to glory. But I saw this wave coming, and a lot of people are prophesying this wave is coming. But what I saw happening was hundreds of thousands of people just like flocking to the altars in repentance, and I did see this re move of repentance yeah. over um, the nations. Really, like I saw. Yeah would shake us with fire and glory that would cause repentance, repentance, repentance. Whoa. And with that, um, what I kept feeling and sensing is the wineskin we're in with church needs to be stretched to allow room for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, 
one of the things that I've noticed in meetings that I've been a part of where we can really move with the Holy Spirit is there's times sometimes where we have to be willing to linger yeah. in the presence and not move or jump too fast past that moment. Like you probably can relate to that Larry. Like you've been probably in meetings where there's like that lull in worship. And yep. then it's like, is the speaker get up? And it's like, we could push in and worship some more. And then sometimes the worship gets to that next level because yep. they're willing to hang out and linger and maybe lay down their planned songs or what whatnot. Yep. And just, just be in the presence and bask for a little bit and just wait on the Lord. And yep. as we press in and we wait on him and we say, God, what are you going to do? And we have expectation. He's going to do everything and anything, you know. Wow. Then he pours out. Then he pours out. And so it's not just individual. Sorry, someone's driving by my house in a big motorcycle. That's all right. <laughs> but it's not just individual. Like what we're talking about is not just you and I being willing to lay it down, but actually the church, I'm just prophetically declaring it right now. The church as a whole um, is about needs to be stretched yeah. for this move that God wants to do and have his way. And I'm so grateful for different pastors and leaders that I have known and met. And they've been spiritual mothers and fathers in my life that are, I know they're willing to lay down, you know, their plan for the service and say, God, we just want what you have. I've been in means where the pastor stops and say, Oh, it's miracle time. You know, <laughs> just, yes middle of the thing and it's like god yes that's what we want we want to be those people that are willing to just lay it all down you know it was, it was interesting I, I as you said this um talking about waiting on the lord like we need to when you have that lull and worship and all that it's it's amazing because sometimes we assume we know what's next we assume like oh this is well you know we got this lull so we need to fill it but i felt like and then sometimes we resist the language of waiting on the lord because we assume it's inactivity. We assume that ah, I just sit around and do nothing. But I, I literally, as you shared that word and used that phrase, I saw a picture of a butler. Wow, I feel, <laughs> I saw a picture of somebody with like a towel on their, like a servant, the towel over their arm. And um, it's like, I'm here to wait on you. I'm here to serve you. I feel the presence of the Lord on that. I'm like, God, it's who we are. We never graduate. I know we're friends. I know we're seated in heavenly places. I, I know there's that dimension, which we must become very aware of. But it's like, oh, God, help me to never graduate. Help me to never think I'm beyond waiting on the Lord, serving the Lord, like serving his agenda, you know, serving what is he doing. Um, that's the scripture that like so ignited my heart when God touched me in Israel. There's this like random scripture. I've got to read this because it's so in alignment with what you're saying. This is what kind of provoked this whole thing where, to make a long story short, David, they're moving the Ark of the Covenant. They're moving it, I believe, back into Jerusalem, and they put it on a new cart. They put the Ark of the Covenant on a new cart on an operating system God never told him to put it on. And the guy touched it, Uzzah, and he died. David got all bent out of shape. They put the Ark of the Covenant. I know this is the like Larry Sparks version. Um, then they put the Ark of the Covenant in Obed-Edom's house. He got blessed. But David's heart was to so move the Ark to the resting place. And they finally did that. But I love this one scripture, 1 Chronicles 16, 37. It says, David arranged for Asaph and his fellow Levites to, I love this, to serve regularly before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, doing whatever needed to be done each day to serve before the presence. And as you said that, waiting on the Lord, people resist that language because they don't know what it means. I didn't know what it means. I think I'm just going to sit around, wait and soak. And I mean, that's part of it. But it's like waiting, a waiter. I like to go out to eat, as, as you know. <laughs> we like to go out to eat. I like to go and, and, you know, waiters, when you have a good waiter, I, I feel like the Holy Ghost is going somewhere. When you have a good waiter, they really serve to the specifics of your every need. They serve you without you even having to ask them. And guess what? We are waiters on the Lord. We are waiting on the Lord. We're friends. I let's, but I just want to push against that for a minute because so many times it's like, oh, but I'm a friend of God and Jesus is my homeboy and he's my buddy. He's the king of glory. Come on. Show and we wait upon him. We wait upon we we are never above and beyond putting on the towel over our arm and and waiting on God and saying, What do you want? And I believe on as you were saying, and you you have accurately as that is our heart. 
as pastors, leaders, churches, and individuals, we're, we're going to wait on God. I'm not going to go through with my agenda. I'm not going to think my agenda is more important than God. I'm going to wait on him. We're going to see exactly what you're talking about. We're going to see glory come. I believe we're going to see demonstrate ma visible manifestations of the glory of God. We're, we're seeing it in part. But it talks about in the last days, we're going to actually see visible manifestations and demonstrations of the glory, not so that we can get a thrill and a zing. I believe that, you know, whether it's coming in a cloud or coming with different, just different things we can see with our eyes or feel or that weightiness, that's going to produce repentance. That's that. Yeah, it comes with joy. I've seen joy in those moments. I believe those Carol Arnett really prophesied as well in her, in her vision, her dream. It's going to come with deep repentance and awe. Yes. so that's yes he is holy he is so holy yeah, yeah. every time i've been to heaven or experienced heaven encounters there's such a holiness of the lord i like i can't tell you like it's like the fear of the lord is all over me every time every time I'm, i just get another measure of how holy he is and how much i need him <laughs> how how unworthy I am and how much I need him. But hey, we just want to yeah. pray for you right now. Yeah. I just feel like now's the time to minister to some of you yeah. on here. Um, there are some of you that I really feel this strongly. I wrote this down that you are pressing in and you're needing breakthrough tonight. Like right now, you're needing God to come one step closer. But the thing is, it's you stepping closer to him. He's right there beside you. I just feel like somebody who's on this, or maybe you're going to watch it later, you are so hungry for a move of God in your life. You're like, you're like there. You're tracking with us. You're like, I'm hungry. I want your way, God. I want whatever you have for me. I want to yield. I want to lay it down and just be with you. But you're needing a touch of the Lord right now. So I'm going to pray right now, if that's okay, Larry. Yeah. Oh, great. Jumping in here, but yes. yeah. So Father, I just pray in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for your glory and your fire. And I just feel the increased fire of God even on me as I say this. This the fire of the Lord right now. It you can just feel it intensify in the atmosphere. And God, I thank you that it's freely accessible. And we step in, Jesus, to all that you have for us right now. God, I pray the impartation of fire to be released right now to those who are needing a touch of it tonight. I think we all do if we'd admit it. Yeah, yeah. And God, we just say we want more and more and more of you. Now, some of you right now, I just pray breakthrough for you in sensing the Lord. Like recently, some of you have um, somebody watching this. You used to feel and sense the Lord with such clarity and hear him with such mm -hmm. clarity. But for whatever reason, right now, now he just feels far away like almost through like I get a vision of him far away like in a long tunnel where the the sound is muffled is what I see and I hear and it sounds like oh, I can't hear him with clarity it's like muffled God I can't hear you I can't hear you where's your answer in this kind of thing so father right now whoever that's for I just pray for that muffleness to break off in Jesus name that you would be Lord speaking to them with clarity and right now whoo I just feel the fire I'm so hot <laughs> I just feel so hot personally right now as I'm saying this, but the fire of God would just touch you, that you would feel the tangible presence, weighty, thick presence of God over you. In his weighty, thick presence is anything is possible. Anything is possible. So when you're in that place, whoa. Just make those faith declarations. Yeah, Let me yeah. tell you, anything is possible. So what is it that you're declaring right now? What is it that you're wanting that is like it would take a move of god it would be a yeah. move of god for that mountain to move or for this incredible dream that you have come on i just feel a fire of god and just uh, just to encourage you right now to dream really 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 big with god and then dream much bigger <laughs> like much much bigger right now because i want to say to you that anything 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 is possible with yeah. Jesus. Yeah. holy wow Ooh, I could just feel fire right now. <laughs> well, and I, I, the only thing I have and and is 
I, and I prayed this when we were with Sid, but I, I and I can't get past this. Is there's a lot of people in, in this this season, and I, not just now, but um, you feel like I want to be hungry for God. You know, it's almost like you'll watch a video like this, you'll watch Sid Roth, you'll watch a pastor, and you're like, I want to have that, um, but I don't have that, and you feel like, what's wrong with me? I want that, I don't have it. What's wrong with me? I just break the lie of the enemy right now. It's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the enemy saying, well, what's, there's something wrong with you. The very fact that you want to be hungry and thirsty for God means that God is already stirring something inside of you because it's not like we just whip up or will up desire for God. That means the Holy Spirit, I actually believe, <laughs> that's funny, the Spirit of God is brooding over you. If you feel like that, I, I just see that, like the Spirit of God hovering over you. And that is why you feel I want to. And I'm like, God, what, what do I do? I feel like the Lord's just saying, Larry, just make a declaration over them. And I'm like, is it that simple? I'm, so I'm talking to the Lord as I'm talking to you guys. And it's like, yeah, it's that simple. Father, for, for and, and if you are so bold, no pressure on this, but if you feel like that's you or whatever, you can, you can let us know, but no pressure. I just want to declare this. If you feel like I want to be hungry and thirsty for God, maybe in a new level, I'm not there right now. Father, I just declare right now that the Spirit of God is brooding and hovering over that man, over that woman. And I declare in Jesus' name, something is breaking. In fact, the very fact, what, what's going to happen is this. You're going to say, you know what? In fact, you, you're, I just feel like the Lord's saying, I'm changing the way you think about it. I'm actually, cha- I, he's, he's, re- he's doing something in your mind. He's, he's saying, I'm, I'm demystifying it. This is the most strange thing. He's saying, I'm demystifying your quest for the presence of God. You want to be hungry. You want to be thirsty. That means I'm doing something in you. He's, <laughs> this is what the Lord's saying. Roll with it. Flow with it. Whoa, <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. Mm-hmm. You know, just, and, and if you're like, well, what do I do? Pra- I need practicals, Larry. I would almost encourage you to keep watching stuff like this. Keep reading the scriptures. Keep reading about particularly accounts. You can go right to the Bible where God has encountered people, where God's drawn near to people. And the last thing I'm going to say is this. Um, I, I'm just, I can't get past this Isaiah 6 thing right now. Isaiah 6, where Isaiah encounters the Lord, encounters the holiness of God. And then he becomes a sent one. Then he goes and changes the world. Then he, he sent on his assignment. And uh, I believe we're in a time and a season of Isaiah 6 encounters. My fr- our friend Lana Vosser prophesied that at the beginning of the year. And all of a sudden I'm like, wow, yes, that's true. Um, here's the deal. You may not encounter God just like Isaiah did. You may not have the same encounter as Isaiah, but God said this, but you have the same God as Isaiah. Oh, wow. So just know that he draws near to people very individually, very personally, but he will not deny the one who is hungry and thirsty. And then Anna, I'm just going to read this one scripture out of Jeremiah and then I'm done. But it felt like the Lord said, Larry, just read this and release it over them. We're very familiar with Jeremiah 29, 11. I want to read 29, 12. It says, whoa, in those days, when you pray, I will listen. My goodness, I feel the fire of God on there. Come on. We're so familiar with verse 11. He's like, Larry, don't even read that. Start with verse 12. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. If you're hungry and thirsty for God, you want to be hungry, just pray. Just cry out to God. Just say, God, I don't need to open heaven. Jesus already did that. Holy Spirit, come. Whatever you need to do, um, whatever you need to undo, Whoa, whatever you need to undo, I want to be undone by you. And the Lord says, as you're undone in his presence, the things that have been binding you will be undone. I see more and more of that happening. Then verse 13, if you look for me wholeheartedly, oh, you will find me. You will. You will. Not you might. But if you look for me wholeheartedly, doesn't mean if you look for me and you're perfect and you got your act together and your T's are crossed, your eyes are dotted and you're, no, no. It says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, and the Lord said, I'm not looking for perfect people, but I am looking for serious people. I'm looking for people who wholeheartedly seek me. And he says this in verse 14, I will be found by you, says the Lord. So Come on. that's, that's that. <laughs> I was hearing Psalm 83. Oh God, do not remain quiet. Do not be silent. Yeah. Oh God, do not be still. And I just want to declare that over you because I feel like that's exactly what um, kind of goes along with what you're saying, Larry, and what the script, different scriptures, but yep, yep. It's almost the same cry of God. Come on, do yeah. not be silent. Come one step closer right yeah. now. 
I really truly believe, and I'm going to pray right now that as you sign off with us yep. here tonight, um, that you are going to go into an encounter with the living Christ that lives inside of you, that wants to draw close to you, that is so real. He is so, we are hungry for him and he so desires you. Yeah. He is in love with you, beloved. He is in love with you and he wants to spend time with you. He wants to hang with you, which is crazy. It blows my mind that the king of all kings would want me and want to spend time with me and you and I, but he loves you. And I know that as you sign, the, as we sign this off or whatever, I pray that you would meet our King Jesus face to face. Yeah. You would feel him close to you. It says in, I think it's in the Passion Translation, somewhere in the Song of Songs, just go there. <laughs> but it talks about his wrap around presence. Mm. And I love that translation. Because I love to think about that. His wrap around presence right now is just drawing around you right now. This very moment, I can feel, I can feel the tangible, like the oozy love of God just wrapping around me. So I know it's available for you as well. So you can claim it as yours. God, 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 I need more of you. I need more of you. And less of me. So have your way. Yeah. And, well, guys, it's been really fun having you join us tonight. And um, I'm going to pray you just have a wonderful evening. Yes. And go right into having all the more. More, 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 guys. Always go hungry for the more of God. Because I know that I'm still hungry. Larry's still hungry. Sid Roth is still hungry. So Come that, on. that encourages me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that we there's more. There's always more. So let's keep going. Let's keep diving in. Let's keep pressing in for the more of God. Amen. Guys, thank Amen. you and have a wonderful, wonderful evening wherever you are.